And today our session is going to be on, um, we have some special guests. We have uh, Rachel Barkers and Kelsey Davis from Coventry Oak Elementary. They're gonna be actually the host of this one. I'm just here to uh, get us all started and make sure we're all rolling like we need to. I wanna point you in the direction of our website for NTI resources if you um, are looking for anything that you um, want to know about that we've been doing. If you look up here at the teacher resources, all of these are resources that we've been creating as we've been going on. And this is where this session will be posted as well under the more goodies. Um, there will be a spot for this session right here. So if you want to come back to anything that's shared in this meeting, then you can find it underneath the more goodies section here. So uh, the other thing I want to point out to you, if you're doing any online meetings and you would like some meeting expectations for your students, if you click on online meeting tools and you open up the online meeting tools slides, you can find some of our expectations that we've set out for, um, for some of the students. These are just expectations for students um, and they're pretty user friendly and um, easy to understand. It's just the basics of what you need to do when you're on an online meeting set situation, like keep your microphone off, turn off your webcam, use good manners, wear clothes. You know, those are all important things um, that you have to remind your students of. So we have made these, they're available to you. And feel free to use it if you're doing any online learning through Zoom or Meet. All right, without further ado, I'll let you all take it away. Thank you so much, Josh. We're excited to be here and I see some fellow librarians and I think Kelsey sees some art teachers in here too. So thanks for coming to our session and listening. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share our presentation. Oops, present our presentation. Um, so we're really just representatives of our whole special area team. We have a really great team. We work well together and um, our school expectation that was that we had some office hours and we just got together and decided that this would, would be what we would do. So um, here are the things we're going to kind of talk about and if there's other things that you want to ask or hear about, feel free to write that in the chat. I think Josh is going to watch that chat and he can chime in and let us know. We also have a bit.ly for our session, so if there's anything that you want to steal from here or pull from here, the bit.ly is going to be on the bottom of all of our pages. It's bit.ly backslash live with specials and if you haven't used a bit.ly before, please know that the capitalization does matter. So the things we're gonna talk about are how we got our students on board for this, how we structured our live lessons, how we differentiate for our different grade levels, um, what, what we do for materials for our students, and how we engage our learners during our lesson. All right, I think that one of the biggest things to remember with this is that perfection was not our goal. We are just trying to reach as many students as possible. And so originally, um, as Rachel said, it was our school-wide expectation to have office hours. And so we put it out there that we would have office hours and every day from one to two, we would have between 20 and 30 faces just kind of staring at us, missing us and wanting to say hi. And um, while that was lovely, we wanted to uh, engage them with more content because we, we were doing two, two truths and a lie or different games with them. Um, but we thought, okay, if this many kids are going to show up, if we start packing some content into this time, that's going to be a way that we can reach even more students. And so now we're up to about 50 to 60 participants um, each day for our live lessons. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how we got our students on board and how we reach out and share that message and, and our time with them. And we do that in a few different ways. Um, I'll let you talk about Dojo, Kelsey. Sure, um, so as a team, we collaboratively have a Google slide um, just in our team drive where each day we post links to our videos. Each of us posts to our YouTube channel um, a daily two to five minute little instructional video that students can watch if they aren't able to join our live session. And so on Dojo, we post uh, just a brief little snippet about what the video contains and then how they can access it. We also have our meeting code to our live lesson for the day so they can join our Zoom and then um, just a little platform where they can submit any pictures of work or videos of what they're uh, learning. We also have found that if you're a school dojo user that um, putting an event in dojo is really helpful because you can set it up to remind students an hour before and when the event starts and when we started doing that we had a lot uh, more students popping in because they're families were getting the reminder that we were about to go live with a lesson. And then um, we're still doing our morning show every day and 
um, out of all of the YouTube videos that I've put up, that's getting the most hits. That's something that our kids are looking forward to seeing every day. So our special area team made a little, um, oops, made a little commercial of that. And I'll play it real quick just because it's cute and fun. And that's the big thing here. We're just, we just like to have fun with our kids. So we just like to have fun with our kids and that that commercial I think on the uh, morning show has gotten them excited knowing that we're about to do some fun content with them uh, during our live lessons. So this was a question when I started talking about it on the library um, email. How, how do we structure our live lessons? What do we do for an hour? Um, so the first thing that we did was we kind of ironed out a weekly schedule where each one of us would kind of take the lead for a day. Um, so each one of our content areas is featured on a different day and that person's responsible for putting um, the event and dojo and getting all the materials ready and having the slide deck for the day. Um, but the teacher that's leading the lesson is not the host in Zoom. So we are all in all of our lessons, but um, the rest of us are doing other things like letting people in, moderating our chat, answering questions, and doing breakout rooms with families who have questions about our NTI assignments. Um, so the structure of our lesson is really similar to if you were planning a lesson for the classroom. We start every time by reviewing expectations. Um, like Josh said at the beginning, a lot of students don't know how to act on Zoom. And so we go over our R2P2 expectations, which just is our school PBIS structure. Um, but we also familiarize them with some of the features of Zoom, especially if they're new or for our younger learners. Uh, we just quickly go over how to raise your hand, how you can um, type into the chat so that everyone can see your answer. And then we use breakout rooms frequently. So we go over expectations for those as well. Then within our slide deck, um, just like you would in the classroom, we've got our target posted with success criteria. Um, but then within our lessons, we try to inc include lots of opportunity for movement because they are sitting, staring at a screen, not only for our special area lessons, but also for their core content areas. And so we have found um, just tons of related go noodles and other movement activities that we can easily embed. Uh, we've also tried to have some challenges within the home. So like for an art lesson I did, for example, um, we were talking about how you can represent your emotions and feelings with symbols. And so I had them think about someone in their family and something that could symbolize that person and go and grab it. So someone maybe went and grabbed a pair of glasses and said, oh, I've got these glasses and they represent my dad because he wears them at night when he reads or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so some people have some items that they could used to symbolize on the screen there. So uh, just ways to get them up and moving is key throughout the lesson. We try to embed at least two of those within each hour. Um, then we have our content and we'll talk more about how we engage our students. So it's not just us kind of reading our slide deck the whole time um, a little bit later. Then again, we just do some more movement and then we have wrap up. Um, we try to throughout to invite parents and students who might just be popping in to truly utilize the time as office hours that might have questions uh, to have lots of opportunities to ask those in the chat. And then like Rachel said, Zoom has such a handy feature called breakout rooms where you can send just one teacher and a select group of students or just one student into a private meeting space where they can then ask questions uh, that pertain just to the individual. And we found at the end of our lessons too, everybody, we have them leave and they trickle off and then a few just want to stop and say hi and we have that special time with them too. So we're not losing that feature of office hours, but they are still getting the content there too. Um, so I mentioned before that our special area team, we just like to have fun. And if you know me, you know, I just like to have fun. So when we started this, we decided, just like Josh was sharing um, the OIT's page on the back, uh, when our kids come in, we have a Bitmoji header 
and I've kind of got a whole slide deck that represents each one of our days. And it's got a, a countdown timer on it too. So when we have our music Monday, this is what the kids are seeing. When we have our STEM lesson on Tuesday, this is what the kids are seeing. So when they enter the room, they kind of know what the day is and they have that countdown timer. And it's just been a fun way for us to keep engaging students instead of when they enter just seeing a blank screen or our faces and they, they have that expectation to come in and sit until the timer goes off and then we'll start our lesson. I would highly recommend to opening your meeting about 15 minutes early. Um, it's been such a great opportunity to connect one-on-one -on -one with some of them before the lesson and it kind of eliminates at the beginning everybody being like, hey, hi, ho, I miss you. <laughs> um, so that, that 15 minutes is a great buffer period where they can be typing into the chat. We're there to moderate and to show our face and just let them know that we're here for them too. Um, so I know that our principal kind of stressed, make, let's make sure we're differentiating for all grade levels. And that might be an expectation that's upon you as well. Um, and it might be something that's kind of holding you back from doing something like this. I think we all were really overwhelmed at the beginning with NTI, just like, where do we start? Um, and we decided to just each day focus K through five on one topic. However, within the lesson, we're trying to differentiate as much as we can um, for all the grade levels. So we try to make every prompt and activity accessible K through five. And really, we've had little baby brothers and sisters joining us too. Um, we try to differentiate our questioning throughout. So having some kind of right there questions, but also those higher order thinking questions to reach, um, you know, some of our older students or students who might be gifted in whichever area we're covering. We make sure our topics are fun and high interest. And then um, we choose things that are adaptable. So ways that we can easily be like, okay, if this is easy for you, extend it simply by doing this instead. So we're trying to pick things that are really easily adaptable. Yeah, today I've got a color poetry lesson since it's National Poetry Month. And um, I was asking Kelsey before, how could I really adapt this for different age levels? And she's recommended, you know, have the kindergartners just choose one line for the poem and then have your older kids take that further and go ahead and do each one of the senses for the poem. So just little things like that um, help out a lot. Uh, another thing people have said is like, what about materials, especially area teachers? We are material heavy in the classroom. So how can we do lessons without materials? Well, if there is something we need, we make sure to advertise those materials needed ahead of time so that families can go ahead and start gathering those things. And um, Kelsey's really good, even on her daily videos, about giving options for students. Um, so like if you don't have paint, which is, has never been in a Zoom meeting, but um, if you don't have this, then you can bring this. If you don't have crayons, you can just bring a pencil. Um, we also, instead of doing our chat, the kids can show note cards like A, B, C, or D. Uh, we also are being intentional, intentional about thinking about the kind of materials that they'll have at home. Like today's lesson, I just need them to have a sheet of paper and a pencil. And even as they sign on, I say, if you don't have a sheet of paper, grab a piece of junk mail, something simple. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, this is just for you to use during our lesson. And we've tried to be intentional about modeling that too, so that you know students who might not have the supplies at home don't feel awkward as other students are holding up their masterpiece or whatever. So I've been doing art on like tiny little post-it notes or the back of an old worksheet just to show them, you know, it, whatever you have is good enough. Um, so we are trying to find as many ways to engage our students as possible. You know, in the classroom, a lot of times we're told to use Kagan strategies to promote student engagement, um, but it's hard where they can't necessarily collaborate through conversation on Zoom. And so we're trying to optimize the features of Zoom as much as possible so that students are able to actively participate and be engaged with each other, with us, and with the content. Um, so we are using some of the features of Zoom and uh, those include the raise your hand tool so that we can know that they want to participate. Um, we've got kindergartners who at first were literally raising their hand in the screen, but now all of our students are familiar with how to use those features. Uh, we try to do a lot of moderating in the chat and uh, providing examples in the chat as uh, if we're not the teacher hosting the meeting. 
um, we might provide a sentence starter, for example, to help get students' minds going in the chat. Our PE teacher does a lot of great things with his Fitness Friday where the students use hand symbols. You could have them do like sign language A, B, C. He's done little cards that they can hold up and show A, B, C, or D to answer a question. Um, another one might be give a fist or a five, a way that they can engage through the screen. Um, We've tried to be really intentional about attention spans and knowing, especially for our younger learners, it's hard for them to just sit and look at the screen. So lots of opportunities to get up and stretch or move, but tying that back to content. And then for our English language learners, um, we have one newcomer who's been attending our meetings religiously every day. And it makes me so happy because she speaks no English, um, but yet is able to participate with us. And we've done that through being intentional about having vocabulary, um, on our slide deck for the day with pictures or um, modeling that and then having sentence stems or sentence starters and then also simply just providing little snippets of directions or what materials they might need in Spanish when possible for that student. And then um, this was Kelsey's amazing art lesson that she did last week and um, we just captured a little piece where you can kind of hear some of the um, engagement techniques she's using. Invertebrates which are animals either with backbones or without. Let's brainstorm some animals together now that are loud. I want us to think of some animals that are as loud as an elephant. Use the chat to type an animal that makes a lot of noise and is loud like an elephant. Or don't forget, you can also use the raise your hand feature on Zoom so we can see whose hand is up and participating that way. I'm going to try to type some in so if my special area team can kind of holler them out as you Ooh, see. We have Gates said a tiger, Ashlyn said a rooster. Oh yes, if you've ever lived near a rooster. Let's make sure that we type our words correctly boys and girls so that we can read them. A T-Rex, a lion, So um, you kind of heard us going back and forth there too, like since Kelsey was managing that screen share, if you've done a Zoom before, you know it's kind of hard to keep your screen shared and see the participants and see the chat and do all of the things. So that's that was me chiming in too to tell her what some of the kids were, were saying on that chat so that she could um, really be facilitating our lesson there. And I was also watching where kids were typing with like seven Zs on the end of their word too. So we try to chime in and do that kind of stuff. Um, so we just wanted to give you an idea if you are a, a special area content leader in your school, some things that we have done or some things that uh, you might be interested in doing for these kind of as a springboard for these lessons. And I put the email address of each one of these teachers on the bottom because um, like I said before, we're just rep two representatives of our team and um, I do not teach music. I don't know a lot about music, but Macy Bell does. So um, if you wanted to reach out individually to any of our teammates, then they would be happy to help with some more ideas. Um, so in her Music Monday, Macy has um, done some music history. She's talked about instruments of the orchestra uh, this week. She had kids find percussion instruments around their house and we played our percussion instruments with um, a song that she had and the music on the screen. And she also uses her virtual music lab a lot to model some of those lessons. Um, our STEM teacher, Andrea Church, she has really done a lot with the breakout rooms. So having um, small games, if you've ever played a breakout game, before in your classroom. She's done the breakout games in breakout rooms in Zoom. So a breakout room is just a way to have a small group lesson basically. And since there's five special area teachers, each of us um, then became the host of a smaller breakout room where we could implement the breakout game in a small group setting. She's done a lot of modeling experiments and uh, our school is Title I. Uh, but we have had a lot of students actually come on live and participate with materials. She made lava lamps the other day and those required vegetable oil and food coloring and nearly every student had those items. But for the ones that didn't, she still found a way to make it fun and model the experiment live so that they could still be a part of it. And then she's done um, different STEM challenges as well. And her email address is on the bottom if you'd like to reach out to her. 
And if the thought of a whole breakout game is a little overwhelming, um, this past week she did a whole lesson on the phases of the moon, and then we just use a used a quizzes in breakout rooms. And so it was it gave the children a better opportunity to participate because in my breakout room I only had seven kids, so more kids got an opportunity to answer and to show me their answers. I could manage seven kids on the screen a whole lot easier than I could all 50 of them to begin with. So it doesn't have to be something as elaborate as a breakout game. It could even just be like your end of um, lesson assessment in a breakout room where you can kind of um, cater to the students a little bit more. Um, so as the librarian, I've done, um, I've kind of focused on a topic each week and mixed some read alouds with different videos and things just to get kids engaged in the topic. Um, we've had short maker challenges. Today I'm going to do a poetry lesson. In the future, I'm going to do a stop motion. Looks like Rachel might be having a little bit of internet trouble. Give her a second, <clears throat> give her a second and see if it comes back on. There we go. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it kind of cut out us on us there, Rachel. So you were just sharing that you've had a theme for each, each time. Yes, I'm sorry. I think my, um, the wind is howling here. Oh yeah, me too. On the, on the cul-de-sac. Um, so I like to hold tight to that um, one central theme and then mix in some, some literature with it. Um, I like to have them do like a little maker challenge like we read um, after the fall and they did a paper airplane, just something to keep them moving. I like to keep that tinkering maker mindset in there. Um, and then I also like to do some technology stuff. So in the future, we're gonna do some stop motion animation in ours and down at the bottom if you've happened to oops i'm sorry if you've happened to write down the bitly or got on it i've got the compiled zoom lessons so everything i've done i've kind of compiled and you're more than welcome to hop on there and steal or use as a springboard whatever you'd like um so as the art teacher i've been really uh, struggling at first how to show them not only my face as i'm teaching but what i'm doing and so um, something that I didn't think of until last week, but I actually found really helpful was to join the Zoom meeting both on my laptop, but then on my cell phone as well. Um, I do a lot of videoing just in my classroom. So I happen to have a tripod to, that holds my phone. But if you didn't, you could easily put it on the end of a bookshelf or make a stack of something and set the phone on top of it. But I've used my phone almost like a document camera. And so um, a feature in Zoom is that students can pin a certain video window uh, so if there's a speaker that you want to see, even though the speaker might not be talking, you can pin the window or the host can do something called spotlight that window. Um, that we've encouraged the students to pin the video from my phone. That way they can see me working live as I'm teaching. So they get my face and the art example that I'm creating. Um, in my lessons, I've tried to be really intentional to embed some of those social emotional skills um, if there are any art teachers in here, you're probably familiar with data drawings. And so um, we talked about what a data drawing is and then how to represent the feelings that you might be having during this time away from school um, and through the coronavirus with symbols or types of lines. And so we created drawings that allowed us to reflect on things that we were going through in our lives. Um, and then in all of our lessons, we've tried to build cross-curricular connections, not only between the content of special areas, but also just giving them more opportunities to do math. So with that data drawing, we talked about graphs and what data is. Um, at the end of my art lesson, I, last week we did like a hybrid animal and they were writing similes about their animal that they had created. So just different ways to incorporate um, all the content into our, each of our lessons. And I will have to say, it's been really cool to see each other teach because um, not only have we like learned from each other in this process and our lessons are getting better each time, but um, the STEM teacher mentioned a few different times, oh, I didn't know that you teach about this or that your kids would research something like this. Or, you know, Kelsey talked about um, a STEM related content 
topic in her lesson. And so Miss Church was able to springboard on that. So it really gives us an idea too, like our PE teacher has been, oh, remember that thing that Miss Spark has talked about? Well, now we're gonna go a little bit further with it here in PE. So it's just been really neat for us to kind of see the perspective and the uh, content of other areas. Um, our PE teacher is awesome. If you were wondering how the heck do you teach PE on Zoom, he's a master. Um, he's done some really cool activities with connecting um, our movement to our nutrition. So he had the kids, everybody one time go and get a snack. And then we looked at that nutrition information on the back of our snack. And for each sugar, a uh, gram of sugar, we had to do a, a you know, maybe jumping jacks or for each carb chirohydrate, we had to do something else. So like he's got all kinds of ways to connect those things. Uh, one lesson he did was on your plate. So your favorite meal. And we had to do different movement activities based on um, the food pyramid. He also does a lot of trivia in the gym already at school. So he's connected those into Zoom. So the kids have trivia questions to answer. And then depending on the, whether they get it right or wrong, your movement activity is connected. And then um, like Kelsey mentioned earlier, he uh, had the kids show A, B, C, or D on their screen. And then he also taught them things that they can do at home with their families. Like he had them get, a, or he used a deck of cards and they chose a card and that would represent what movement activity they wanted to do. So kids were then able to go find a deck of cards, make a deck of cards and teach their families how to play and keep that movement going on at home. Um, so we had a question in the chat about managing students during this, and we've alluded to it several times, but while each day of the week is one content area focused, we're all in there co-teaching together. I don't know if I would be able to manage the 50 or so kids by myself on Zoom, um, but we actually allow them to show their video throughout because a lot of times we're like, okay, hold this up, show this, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So we do a lot of engagement through the videos. Um, we do remind them of the expectations and that, you know, we can see what's behind them in their video. We had a student who was participating without a shirt on. So we took him into a breakout room and just said, go put your clothes on and then come back and join us. And we shut his video down. Um, if you're not familiar with Zoom, features too, there is a way where you can, as the host, stop sharing a student's video if something inappropriate did happen to come up on the screen. Uh, but we let them leave their videos on. As the host, uh, we keep all the mics muted except for the special area teammates, but we do allow students to unmute themselves when they've been called on through the raise their hand feature. Um, or if they have something that they've typed into the chat that we want them to share aloud. Management, definitely could be an issue if you're running the meeting by yourself. I could see how that would be very difficult. Be because we're intentional about our expectations of staying muted unless you've been called on and um, familiarizing them with how to use Zoom, it really hasn't been a big issue for us, but I could see how it could turn into one if you were by yourself. Well, and we actually had a student that was having internet problems um, one time and she kept unmuting herself, but then we would get the, the extra sound, even though her connection was on and off. And so when that happened, as the host, I just moved her to the waiting room and sent her a message in the waiting room that said, if you, you, you come back in, you've got to mute your mic. And then we brought her back in and we didn't have any more problems um, from that at all. And if you didn't know this about Zoom, as well. We tell the kids to mute their mic from the beginning and then when they want to talk they hold down on the space bar and that unmutes your mic and then they take their hand off and it mutes them again which is just helpful for elementary kids because once they unmute their mic and start talking they forget to mute it again. So that that space bar trick has been really helpful. I also saw that Michelle Armstrong said something about connecting her phone to her laptop with a cord and opening up, uh, up in Zoom, which is really cool. There's also a way to share your screen without a cord in Zoom. Um, if you share your screen, you can do it if you're on the same internet. Um, I could share the contents of my phone that way too. Um, you can do yeah, it. Yeah, it's a screen mirroring feature. So that, yes. that was really cool. But when I tried to use it, it was just, when you're the one presenting the content and you've got your slide deck and your phone and you're trying to share your slide deck and then you're trying to share your mirror your screen on your phone like a document camera it was just too much for me so i found joining the meeting twice to be helpful but i'm not a technology person so that could be my my issue too well and i think i mean i, I liked the way that you did that too because when you when i share my screen that's my iphone screen it makes it a little skinny in the middle 
So it was helpful to be able to see you bigger like that. All right, I think that's the last slide in our slide deck. Well, ladies, I appreciate all that you have done and shared with us. Um, I'm gonna just take over the screen share real quick and I'm gonna show some of those features that you were talking about where people can actually find those, um, those exact things that you were talking about in Zoom. Um, if you go to our website and you go to online meeting tools, if you scroll down under Zoom, what I've done, um, and I had this before this, this was not part of this, but there are some many how-to videos. So if you're wanting to know how do they mute the students or how do they do any of this stuff, there's a bunch of little screenshots of how to do certain things. And then also below that is how to use the breakout room feature uh, from start to finish. There's a whole slide deck for that as well. Um, and so I just thought that, you know, while you all were talking about that, it'd be a good place to point people to. And then um, under more goodies, which is where we'll find this one, there's also, oops, not there. They moved it on me. Hey, Josh, we see your desktop right now. Oh, I shared the wrong screen. Sorry. I'm struggling today, y'all. I'm just, you know, it's just like everybody else. I struggle too. So anyway, so right here under um, online meeting tools, there is the Zoom how-to videos, and then the Zoom breakout rooms right here. So um, you can see there's the videos of how-to and then the breakout room things are there as well. And then also under innovative hacks, um, here are some slides on how to actually make that document camera feature work. Like Kelsey was saying, like um, with, I just use some spaghetti boxes and um, a spaghetti box and some cans to get that to work there. So there's some of those instructional things for you as well to show what um, they were talking about. But I just wanna say thank you to you all and to your art team. My kids love it. They actually go to Coventry, which is um, part of the reason why I thought it would be great for them to show what they're doing. Because I basically get to see my little kids run into my space like every day for a little bit of time, running to get the materials that they need and they're running back to there. Um, so I appreciate all that you all are doing. And um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. If not, we're gonna go ahead and um, say thank you and move on out. Uh, thank you. And I want, do want to add one more thing because Josh talked about being a parent is that another thing we try to do is make our session just a time for kids to be able to do things independently because we know that parents are super overwhelmed. So everything we do, we'd like to just be able to, hey, put your kid in front of Zoom for an hour and we got it. So, but thank you guys so much for coming and we appreciate your feedback on the side and thanks for listening and thanks for supporting us. Yeah, and feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions or need access to other materials that we talked about. Um, we really appreciate you all. Or if you've got any great ideas for lessons, please reach yes. out and share what you're doing too, because we got to do this for another month. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to go ahead and end this one. Thank you all for coming, and we'll see you at our next one. Thanks, Josh.